Monogamy is a nearly universal relationship orientation of sexual and emotional exclusivity with one partner at a time. However, the world is full of attractive people. So how do monogamists resist temptation and are their strategies actually working? Let's look at some data. Researchers in 2019 wanted to understand how people work to protect their monogamous relationships from these attractive alternatives, especially if they are part of their social circle, so friends and work colleagues. The study used the investment model as a guide. The investment model was developed by Roosevelt in 1980 and states that relationship satisfaction, investments, and the quality of perceived available alternatives influence and predict commitment. And the level of commitment predicts how long a relationship is going to last. So these researchers surveyed 287 adults in heterosexual long-term relationships in the United States and then followed up with 131 of them two months later. Using valid questionnaires, they measured how participants tried to keep the monogamy going. For example, did they turn down plans that the other person tried to make with them, or did they feel guilty that they flirted with this other person? The topics were grouped under three headings. Proactive avoidance, basically what it says, avoiding those other people. Relationship enhancement, so investing tangible and intangible things into the existing relationship to strengthen it. And self-monitoring and derogation, which include emotional and cognitive strategies, like telling yourself you're not really attracted to that person, or they're bad for you, or they're not really that great anyway. Results showed a few things. First, there is a difference whether the other person is actually attracted to you as well. So whether the attraction is reciprocal. This is kind of to be expected. If it's just one-sided, it's easier to let it go, I guess. It's not so much of a threat. So those who reported that the attraction was reciprocal used significantly more monogamy maintenance efforts. They had to just really work a lot harder to keep the monogamy going. For proactive avoidance, participants used that whether they felt a high level of commitment in their current relationship or not. That's interesting, but it could be a case of wanting to avoid something developing over time with this alternative person because these are people in your social circles and you're going to see them around, right? Interestingly, relationship enhancement strategies were negatively associated with commitment. In other words, people who said they felt committed in their current relationship did not make an extra effort to invest more into that relationship to avoid temptation. This may be because they take their relationship for granted or because they invest in them for the relationship's sake, so not in order to or with the motivation to make up for misbehaving. You know, the stereotypical guy move of buying you flowers or jewelry after they've gone to the strip club or something. Self-monitoring and derogation was the only factor that was positively associated with relationship commitment. So those individuals who were more committed to their current partners were more likely to perceive their attraction to others as a threat and try to talk themselves out of it. Crucially, None of these activities helped participants stop being attracted to others. They also didn't, and I quote, predict later success in resisting romantic or sexual infidelity. Overall, even when the intent is there, the number of monogamy maintenance efforts used did not effectively protect monogamy, at least in our sample. In conclusion, commitment predicted the use of relationship enhancement and self-monitoring, but not proactive avoidance strategies. More monogamy maintenance efforts were needed if the attraction was mutual, but there was no link between these monogamy maintenance efforts and success in staying monogamous at the follow-up. Now, obviously, lots of people are able to stay monogamous, so that's why more studies are clearly needed. Maybe it's a question of trying all the strategies and then using a combination consistently. You can check out the details of this paper in the description. And if you like this video, you're also going to like the one about mononormative bias. So check that out and I'll see you there.